Hi, good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Marshall of the Atascadero United Methodist Church. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday. And also we will be honoring our graduates today. So may we gather now and together in worship and bring our hearts, our minds, our souls before God as we join together in this time of worship. the Lord as long as we live. We will sing to God while we have been. God sends forth the Spirit, and all is made new. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh God, in the burning fire of your love, you were pleased to send the Holy Spirit on your disciples. Empower us to be grounded in unity, that evermore living in you, we may be found both steadfast in faith and active in your work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we're going to take a moment just to lift up our graduates. And we have a list of them. Uh, we are grateful for all of their hard work and uh, congratulate 
you all on your hard work and how it's brought you to this point in your life where you're graduating and know that it's only the beginning of your journey in some ways as you end your classwork in this particular context. So some of you are graduating from high school, some of you are graduating from college, some of you are being promoted from eighth grade to high school. All of these are momentous occasions in your history. And we uh, support you and pray for you as you move on into your next part of your journey. I know it's not exactly the traditional uh, approach to graduation this year because of the COVID-19 crisis. And in some ways, perhaps it makes it even more special that you are achieving this during this time. On behalf of the church, we pray for you, we bless you, we celebrate with you. Congratulations. So as we uh, recognize our graduates, I'd like to uh, offer this prayer for them. Let us pray. As your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive towards excellence in all you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the fanfares cease, may you sing of joy even in the dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you graduate, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know of the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
Today from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 1 to 9, and 12 to 21. This is The Message by Eugene Peterson. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then, when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joke, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and, backed by the other eleven, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They have ha- have had, haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, your daughters, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. And when the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they will prophesy. I will see set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke and the sun turning black, and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help, to me, God will be saved. Holy God, the compassionate you upon whom we call for help and guidance. Come near to us, O God. Come near us now to hear and answer our prayers. We come to you today because we have always depended on you and you have never before let us down. We come as individuals and as a community to call on our God's unfailing love for all who ask for your aid and with a deep longing to receive a response to help us in our special need. Great God of the impossible and possible, You alone are God, and you alone are able to turn around our situation and to offer us a future hope within God's great miracles of mercy, forgiveness, and gracious love. Lord of great mercy, all the nations will come and bow before you. Amen. Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, 
Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I sing my praise to God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Holy God, the compassionate, you, upon whom we call for help and guidance, come near to us. O oh God, come near us now to hear and answer our prayers. Come, we come to you today because we have always depended on you, and you have never let us down. We come as individuals and as a community to call on our God's unfailing love for all who ask for your aid, and with deep longing to receive a response to help us in our special need, God, great God of the impossible and possible, you alone are God, and you alone are able to turn around our situation and offer and to offer us a future hope within God's great miracles of mercy, forgiveness, and gracious love, Lord of great mercy. All the nations will come and bow before you. Amen. Today the reading is from 1 Corinthians 12, 3b through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given this manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as a body is one and has many members, all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit, we will be baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, Slaves are free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. And now the prayer of response. Almighty God, the trustworthy you upon whom we call for blessing and support, come near to us, O God, so that the light of your unfailing love will shine brightly on us to give us all hope. We come seeking your strength help and protection for you alone are able to guide us through all that threatens and frightens us. We look to you, O God of all hope and transformation, to lift us out of our fog of despair and grieving and to show us the way forward because we are committed to the worship and honoring of your holy name. Be for us now all that you have always been, faithful, trustworthy, generous, and forgiving. O God of unfailing love, all the nations will come and bow before you. Amen. I am the church. You are the church. We 
are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's writing, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when we cannot gather, there's still singing and there's praying, there's still laughing and there's crying too, and all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. On this Pentecost Sunday, as we celebrate the church, I'm very interested in this topic of I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. It was a song that our, our kids learned, I believe, at camp first, and then they brought it back for us uh, to learn in church. And as I was thinking about what it means to be the church today, I was thinking back on the, my experience with the Chicopee Falls United Methodist Church, my home church. It's the church where I fell in love with God, where I learned about how to worship, where I went from being taken to church by my parents as a very young child to driving myself there. I went from going to Sunday school to learning about God through the different classes I was in, all the way through youth group, and then teaching Sunday school myself there. I developed a sense of place in God's community there. It was a place I belonged, where I was loved and nurtured, a place where I rang the Revere Bell. Yes, and that's uh, the Revere Bell was made by the Paul Revere family. You remember Paul Revere. He was the guy that said, here, here comes the British during the Revolutionary War times. It was a church where I spent served, serving spaghetti dinners, where I finally learned how to sing in a choir, where I would go for Christmas Eve when I was on break home from school. It's where I made friends and helped lead worship and even in my later years, I would preach when I was home for the summer. The youth group I was involved with was always doing something. We were doing a Halloween party, or we were doing a newspaper drive, or we were on a camping trip. We were singing carols to shut-ins. We were studying scripture or putting on talent shows. This church 
where I left to go to school, I was always welcomed back with open arms and smiles. It was a community where I shared my call to ministry, and before I knew it, I was on the road to seminary. And then ordination. This church helped pay for textbooks when I was in college, held, helped me to talk about what I learned. It's a place where I participated in baptisms and funerals and weddings and anniversaries. Yes, this Chickabee Falls United Methodist Church, which stood for over 170 years, is now a parking lot for the Baptist Church across the street. Now, this is Pentecost, and it is time to celebrate the Christian Church, to remind ourselves that we belong to a movement, a way of gathering and praising God, a way of being present together, together a connection that we feel with one another and the Holy Spirit as we give thanks and are inspired to live out the gospel. And it is a time to remind ourselves that the church is not a building. It is a living, breathing community that has been birthed into the world and is, in C.S. Lewis's words, eternal forever and ever. He says, long after the buildings are raised, denominations disband, popes buried, pastors put out the pasture, the church endures because it's built not with our hands, but with God's. The people of Chickabee Falls United Methodist Church still live in me, just as much as the saints, my grandparents, my mom, my uncles and aunts, cousins are a part of me. And there is nothing that can separate me from them. Not distance, not because the saints dwell in the eternal realm and I am immortal. No, because in everything on earth and heaven are part of God. Nothing can separate me because I'm connected through God's loving spirit to all my life, past and present. And on this graduation Sunday, as I reflect on the schools I've attended, I realize too that these people are a part of my life. The classes I attended, the discussions I had, the sports I participated in, all of this remains in me and with me. I'm grateful for the internet because it's helped me to reconnect with some of these classmates from the past. To uh, We go online and we relive past memories, uh, gain perspective on what our time was back then and who we are today. It's amazing to me that some of the hardest times we endured back then, like one time our campus was evacuated. In fact, the whole town was evacuated because of the threat of a flood that was coming. And another time we uh, had to evacuate because in the middle of winter, the whole heating system for the college went down, it broke down. We had to stay on an unplanned break away from school. It's interesting that we now, as I talk to my friends and classmates back then, that those are some of the times we remember the most. The good times that we had coping with those sort of interesting experiences of our time together. It's also fun to see where they are in their lives. We, we have class, I have classmates who are social workers and doctors, therapy dog trainers, advocates for those living with special needs, and even a few pastors. They were gone from me, lost to me, I would say, for a long time, some 30 years. But now we've found each other and share new experiences as we share on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Our bond, our bond is strong, as strong now, and even in some ways stronger than when we went to school or went to church together back so many years ago. 
We are connected in wonderful and marvelous ways through the spirit of God that connects us to all creation. We are all part of the church eternal, part of creation which welcomes us and nurtures us, breaks down the walls that divide us and leads us to care for one another. This is the essential work of our church. Now, given the reality of where we find ourselves today, a place where we have to redefine what it means to be the church, redefine how we do worship, redefine what it means to be faithful, we need to root ourselves deeper into God, dig deep and let all the work that we take on help break down those walls that divide us. By this, I don't mean stop practicing social distancing or stop staying at home or stop wearing masks. I mean, it is time to rediscover our connectedness to one another and find a way to be the beloved community in this time and place. And I believe that starts with digging deep into our spiritual practices, whether it be we, whether we pray or whether we sing or whether we write or whether we read or whether we talk about God. We need to feed our souls in this time with, the, with that that enriches us and connects us with one another. My home church's building eventually had to be torn down. Its walls no longer able to hold up the roof. But the church still lives inside of me. The people I met and worship with at the Chicopee Falls United Methodist Church, like Mr. and Mrs. Landry, my youth group leaders, now in the eternal realm, they live in me. Mr. Churchill, who asked me when I was interviewing for the first time about my call to ministry, if I love Jesus, he lives in me. Reverend Holcomb, who taught our confirmation class, all of these and more live in me and connect me with God. I belong to the United Methodist Church, which is going through difficult times right now as we try to navigate through severe disagreements. The Methodist Church is a church that has taught me how I'm connected beyond my local church to the thousands of missionaries and pastors and laity that is going on around all, that I'm connected to all the, the work that these folks are doing all around the world. They are learning to make new disciples and how to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. I also belong to the church universal and eternal, a part of the great fellowship that includes all who live out their faith. And on this day, on this birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday, I celebrate all of the churches that we participate in. The local church, the Atascadero United Methodist Church, or whatever church you attend to and uh, regularly. The CalPAC United Methodist Church Conference, which encompasses all of Hawaii and Southern California. The Methodist Church worldwide that we are connected through our giving. And of course, the larger church, the more internal church, the church that continues and lives and breathes all through history. That all who follow Jesus are united together in this eternal church. And so on this day, I give praise, as the psalmist gave praise in the poem that we wrote, read together. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all God has made. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I am still alive. Let my praises, praises be pleasing to him. I am rejoicing in the Lord. Let me who bless bring... Let me who is blessing the Lord, bless the Lord. So on this Pentecost Sunday, may you bless the Lord in whatever way you can 
and give thanks to God for this eternal church because you are the church, I am the church, we are the church together. Amen. Thank you for your generous giving during this time of social distancing. Offerings can be mailed or using the link you can submit a credit card to continue your support of the ministries of the local and worldwide church. Today, we feature the work of the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry. As the United Methodist Church's Leadership Development Center, this ministry is charged with nurturing and resourcing lay and clergy leaders around the world. As they say, we help people discover, claim, and flourish in their callings. We stand with them, connecting them with what they need to be principled Christian leaders who seek to better the world. Pastor Steve attended Union College in Barberville, Kentucky for his BA degree in religion. Union College is one of those colleges the Board of Higher Education and Ministry supports financially, so those who need support in obtaining their education can. Please give generously. A portion of your offering supports the work of the Board of Higher Education and Ministry. O oh, eternal God, we send our support to those who seek to lead and guide our world with our prayers, offerings, and love. We ask you to bless all schools, colleges, and universities that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then let's pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may you go into the world fully immersed in the church eternal. May you be the hands and feet of Jesus as we move into this time. And may you celebrate that true connection you have with God and with all creation. Go in peace. Amen.